So Kyrie Irving is one of the players that so many around the league are keeping their eyes on as free agency opens in just under two hours. And Tim McMahon, you were front and center for Kyrie Irving's tenure in Dallas here joining us now. What is the expectation surrounding Kyrie Irving when free agency opens? The, the Mavericks remain optimistic that that tenure in Dallas will continue. From Mark Cuban to Nico Harris and Jason Kidd on down the line, they've made a priority to try to continue building and maintaining that relationship with Kyrie. But these are delicate negotiations for the simple fact that the Mavericks want to respect Kyrie. They want to give him an offer that reflects his, his value, his status. But they also need to do what's best in terms of building out the rest of the roster. Part of that means protecting that full mid-level exception. They cannot give him the full max and have that $12.4 million mid-level exception. So there's a little bit of, of give and take there. But, you know, as, as Ramona and Wendy and others have pointed out, there is not a clear market for Kyrie in terms of other realistic alternatives. He can meet with the Suns, mm -hmm. but is he going to take the minimum to go there? No. The Mavericks aren't going to be motivated to cooperate on signing trades with with anybody. Now, the, the one potential scenario is if the Rockets are not successful with their plan A, which is Fred Van Vliet, they could pivot to Kyrie Irving. They do have cap space to, to put a, a max offer uh, on the table there. But even that contingency plan, I'm not sure that's something the Rockets would move forward with for the same reason they decided, eh, let's hold off on going after James Harden. They want to get a Fred Van Vliet type in there to be a leader for this young core that they've acquired over the previous few years. So all that being said, it looks like Kyrie Irving will ultimately be back in Dallas. So let's just say, though, Tim, let's just say Kyrie Irving goes elsewhere, wherever that may be. What would the ramifications be for Dallas? Well, obviously, that would be a massive blow to the Mavericks. And it would, look, it's bad business for two straight summers. Your second leading scorer leaves the franchise. And, look, I, I, if it's a sign-and-trade type of scenario, which, again, the Mavericks don't want to, but hypothetically, let's say they're pushed to a point where cooperating with that would make sense, they could at least recoup some assets. But, again, the, the full belief and confidence within the Mavericks organization is that they will achieve their top priority of keeping Kyrie Irving. This isn't like Jalen Brunson last year where we knew going into this, hey, the Knicks have moved money around. They're getting Jalen Brunson. There's not a clear alternative for Kyrie Irving. So, you know, that worst-case scenario is something that the Mavericks don't believe that they will have to deal with again this summer. Tim, thank you. This is a situation that we are certainly going to continue to keep an eye on. But it's not just Kyrie Irving. It's also his former teammate that is looking at potentially suiting up for a third team in the last three years, and that's in James Harden. So Brian Windhorst joins us once again. Brian, help us read the tea leaves here. What do you expect could be next for James Harden now that he has opted into his deal, but we know that he wants to go elsewhere? Well, let's keep in mind, Malika, that it's James Harden wanting to work with the 76ers. They want to come together where James Harden expresses what he would like and the Sixers try to find something that they can move forward with and remain championship-level contenders. What James Harden really would like, from what I am told, is to go back home to Los Angeles, where he is from, and play uh, with the Clippers. And the Clippers realized this, too, and began preparing for this type of scenario uh, 24 to 48 hours ago. They have an, a menu of things that they can offer uh, for him. They can offer expiring contracts. They can offer a couple of first-round draft picks. They can offer pick swaps. They can offer players that are under contract that might be more suited to be starter-level players. Mm. It comes down to what exactly Philadelphia wants. And from Philadelphia's standpoint, they have to decide something very important, Malika, whether or not they want to take a trade right now and hold the assets, those first-round picks potentially, or those players, and then try to go get another player later. Maybe a guy like, I don't know, Dame Lillard, who may or may not become available in the short term or medium term, or whether they want to do a trade to complete their roster now. That is some of the things that they're going through. Now, one thing, I'll, I'll, last thing I'll say, remember that Daryl Morey is very patient. He waited yep. six months to trade Ben Simmons two years ago when there was a stalemate, and he ended up winning that trade big time, getting James Harden. So keep that in mind. I, I think that it could go long, but I also think if certain things fall the right way, we could see something happen relatively soon. Park, since you are Houston area resident here, I'll start with you. Is there a team that you have your eye on this free agency? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely I do. 
It's the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh. It's the Milwaukee Bucks because Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez mean so much to that franchise. And I believe bringing those two guys back is very important because we have to ask ourselves, who won the MVP this year? Joel B, a center. Who won the finals MVP in the championship? A center in Jokic. And when I look at the, the market for free agents, I'm looking at a guy that reminds me a lot of myself right now looking in this camera. Oh. Eye candy. And that's Brooke Lopez. <laughs> He's the most attractive person on the market right now because the center position must be filled by a lot of teams, especially the teams that are knocking at the door as okay, far as competing for a championship. Mm. So when I look at the Milwaukee Bucks, yes, it's a must for them to sign back Chris Middleton, but they cannot lose Brooke Lopez in free agency. Did you say I candy, bro? You heard what I said. You said I <laughs> look how I mean. You mean? Look, Kim? Yeah. Both the way, by the Zach, way. what she needs <laughs> your eye on. <laughs> They're still talking over there. I know. I did. Sometimes yeah. you just have to let them go. I was Milwaukee was on my short list, Perk. Milwaukee's on my short list, but I'm going to give you a duh. And the duh is the Portland Trailblazers because this is oh, opening oh, day oh. in free age. Oh, That's oh, it's low only hanging fruit. It's Jack. only in Damian. That's really low hanging fruit. All right, fine. Jack. Move on. Move on. <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say about that. Go ahead, Zach. The whole league is watching Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard is a player that's worth just waiting with bated breath to see where he goes. He is a player who could tilt the championship picture by himself next year. You don't think the Heat are waiting? Everyone in the league is waiting. What does Portland do? They had a strange decision today, yeah. waving one of their young players, Trendon Watford. What does that mean? Do the wind horse thing. So I'm just watching Portland for oh. the tea leaves. Don't make an yeah. angry face at me. I'm not an answer. My answer is uh, Philadelphia. Uh, I'm looking uh, to see oh, what they're going to wow. do with James What an original <laughs> thought. <laughs> right. No, but I'm just, Zach, I'm just saying, Zach, we've been talking about Dane for the last three and a half, four years. They just had a meeting. He's waiting to see it out. Brooke Lopez is the eye candy. The center position. We're going to keep talking about, about the, the eye candy. I did think that Brooke Lopez had one of the best answers on this show that I've ever heard in a non-answer of where he wants to go, what he wants to do in free agency when he said he wants to go to Seattle or Montreal. or it was, it was impeccable. I do know that, Vince, seriously, though, you do have your eyes on Philadelphia. What's the ideal situation for Well, I'm, I said this while well, listening to you guys talking. I agree 100% about Tyrese Maxey, but it was, it's funny to see how you lose Doc Rivers because James Harden wasn't happy with how he was used. Sure. And now he gets his money and he's on the way out. So now you're bringing in, you know, you're going to move him and you're going to bring in some talent. But what does that say about Maxi? And then I'm also interested in what happens with Tobias Harris. Mm. And I go back to thinking, Joel Embiid, how did he feel about Doc Rivers being moved? Which I thought he was pretty happy with, you know, in, yeah. in general. And, and now we're not talking about what what he wants. So I think yep. at, at the end of the day, Joel Embiid plays a huge role in this and what he wants and what players he's interested in. Hey, go get this guy. Go get that guy. Bring it in because I think I can play with him and we can win together. But Maxi still has to be on that roster. Well, in a sense, it's a perpetual audition, right? Can yes. you keep these stars? Can you keep a star like Joel Embiid happy and feeling like he has a chance to win? Especially and whoever the they put had. around him, that, that's going to be uh, important in all that. Who are you looking at, Rich? Well, it's unfortunate because I had something ready, and it was the Kings, and then they spent all their money. They spent all their money on, what, what's his what name? You really bad Harrison about Barnes. Yesterday. What did I say about the Kings? I said, don't forget about the Kings. Ah, oh, the Kings. Go ahead. Yeah, Max. that's what I was going to talk about. What I wanted to talk about with the, with the Sacramento Kings is will they make that jump? So, are they going to be able to add somebody? Are adults. they going to be able are they going to be able to, Well, I think they have adults on their team. But for me in free agency, what is it that you add again? I will go back. I will go back to the Denver Nuggets. They added the two two most perfect pieces in Bruce Brown and KCP to me. So if you can just add one or two pieces to your team, and again, I, like they, they re-signed Harrison Barnes, so some of their cap space is gone, but if they're able to sign one or two, maybe they can actually make a run in that Western Conference. We saw they were the most consistent team all year last year in the Western Conference outside of Denver, and so for me to see that young team may continue to make a group, I think they need to add some people. They're young, and the Denver Nuggets had to go through growing That's pains. why Are I'm we, watching them okay. closely in free agency. They don't have to add nothing right now. Why does he get keep... to sit at the end of the table and poo-poo all our answers? How, why, I, I, does I, it look I, I, I didn't poo-poo you. Got, what you mean, poo-poo? By the way, I saw Morris Chestnut last weekend, <laughs> and he was offended that you compared yourself <laughs> to him. Oh, my was, goodness. All right, so Adrian Wojnarowski started this block, gentlemen. Yeah, that was 
is nice. You can pick that name drop off off the floor. Yeah. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski started this block, Zach and, and Vince, because those are the only two people <laughs> I'm going to talk to. Yeah, the adults of the room right now. Zach, by, by talking about the Houston Rockets and just how much space they have to potentially go after a player like Fred Van Vliet, what do you expect there? I expect them to be aggressive because they're under a clear directive to try to get better next season to try to just make progress in terms of wins and that they are the sort of free agency scary guy that all the teams are all the agents are using for leverage and all that they can do anything they want but Van Vliet is particularly interesting because Toronto's a good team if he leaves they don't really have another point guard unless they're ready to turn the offense over to Scotty Barnes, which maybe they are, but that is a short-term step back for the Raptors. And if there is a short-term step back for the Raptors, what happens to Yaka Pirtle? What happens to Pascal Siakam? What happens to OG Ananobi? What are the domino effects of a potentially the only point guard organizer on their team leaving in free agency? So that's why that is such an interesting domino. It's that it hits a lot of other ones that could go in different directions. You can see the teams on your screen right now with the most yeah. cap space. The Rockets leading the way, followed by the San so Antonio Spurs. That's why they were so trash, last year. This, this, this this so trash last year. Yes, the Pistons. You got that much money to spend? You weren't. You did not feel the team but that was now, respectable. Now they got new a lot of head coach, money, and they got a lot of young pick talent. coming in, they got young a lot of talent. Stuff, but We're big fans of Alper and Shangoon one. in this building. Yeah. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.